Well, let's talk to uh, James O'Rourke now, a professor at uh, the University of Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business, specializing in reputation management. Um, James, welcome. Um, how much damage can these big brands inflict on themselves uh, by drawing international condemnation? Well, I think there are a great deal. Uh, there, there is a great deal more to worry about in terms of reputation than there is in terms of revenue. Uh, as you balance the calculation between the risk of remaining in Russia and the risk of withdrawing, the the balance is headed in the direction of withdrawing. The greater risk is remaining there, and. The risk actually is damage to your reputation in other Western nations and other nations globally. Will people quit doing business with you? Will it affect your share price? Will it affect your ability to hire and retain employees? Will it affect your ability to retain business partners? That's all at stake here. And can we quantify this? I wonder, are we fickle as consumers? We make a lot of fuss and outrage on social media, but we forgive and forget our missteps by our, our favorite brands, don't we? It doesn't take long. Well, uh, a friend of mine who follows reputation management once said the American public has the attention span of a golden retriever. So I, I took his point to be that people do forgive, they do forget, they move on to the next thing. But this is so big, people are unlikely to forget. And if you're seen as a collaborator or a fellow traveler, that can really harm your reputation in the long term. Um, the vodka company uh, manufacturing in Latvia and headquartered in the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg called Stolichnaya has said they're rebranding. They're just going to become Stoli. They want to distance themselves from their Russian roots, even though they're not Russian held or Russian owned now. The issue of reputation has become, I think in the last 10 years, one of the most important things that chief executives and that the C-suite officers think about, no one can conduct a business alone. No businesses are fully vertically integrated, meaning bottom to top. Um, you've got to have business partners. You've got to have people willing to do business with you. A small example, following the explosion of the Macondo wellhead in the Gulf of Mexico, BP blamed that disaster and the loss of nine lives on their business partner, Transocean. Transocean is a company that extracts oil from the crust of the earth. So when BP went into the Rosneft deal in Siberia, they had to partner with people. And I will tell you that it took them a long time to find people willing to work with them again. It's all a matter of trust. And if people no longer trust you, you're going to find it very difficult to do business anywhere. James, it's also a matter not just of trust, but of time. Some of these brands are taking a few weeks to discover their moral compass. Uh, I guess corporate boards are, yeah. are weighing up profits versus reputation. I mean, it, it is taking some of them a feral bit of time to come to a decision, isn't it? It is. And I would uh, speculate at the moment that the reason for the delay there, you know, this is kind of a bell-shaped curve. The early exiters were people who left in moral outrage and said, I don't care what it costs me. I'm not doing business there. The people who followed along said there is real safety in doing this. Um, others who have held back have said, well, how difficult is it going to be to reconstitute our business? Uh, others have been struggling with those who actually own the business, not with shareholders, but with uh, franchisees and others. McDonald's is a good example. The store on Pushkin Square, the largest McDonald's store in the world, is owned and operated by McDonald's Canada. And for that reason, the parent company does not have contractual authority to shut the store. But I'm sure they're in conversation with them. I am sure they are trying to determine how and when they will exit that business. It's becoming increasingly difficult for them to find uh, raw materials, fresh food, uh, lettuce, um, 
a number of other uh, products come from Finland. And so doing business there on a practical matter has become increasingly difficult. An added thought, it's not easy to get money out of Russia. Even if you're making a profit, it's difficult to get it out in a convertible currency. So if you don't have that capability, there's not much point in staying. James, good to talk to you. Professor James O'Rourke at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. Thank you.